hello. Here we are. We are going to talk about Xcode today, and I'm going to discuss how to create a tab bar controller using Storyboard. Um, I have a sample tab bar controller here, and you can see in Storyboard that we have a, you know, kind of a tree structure here. But you know, you can arrange these however you want. You can drag the views around. Let me zoom in on it. So I'm going to zoom in here and you will see that I have a gray box here that says tab bar controller. So this is the tab bar navigation controller. So we don't put anything in here, but it manages the views that are displayed when you click on the tabs. Below the, uh, the view control or the navigation controller, I have um, three view controllers and each one of these view controllers represents a view that you can create. So when I say create, you're going to drag things from um, the object library and add them to the view here, and then they'll display on the screen when you click on the tab. Okay, so I have three tabs here. I have a red, green, and blue one. And um, let me kind of, I like, I like them when they're all arranged nice, right? So there we go, right? So they're all arranged. Let's test this. I'm going to click the run button here, and we'll test it in um, in the simulator and you can see the three tabs at the bottom and if I click on one of the tabs it takes me to the three views okay so let's build this from scratch so I'm going to um, close this project down and start a new project so I'll do that by going to the file menu and choosing new project and I'm going to choose an iOS project. So, you know, we can click on any of these tabs here, but I want to make sure I click on the iOS tab. And then under application, you know, we can pick all these different types of applications, but I want to make sure that I choose the app application, right? So this is going to be a blank app in the iOS um, platform, right? And then you can give it a name. So I'm going to call this uh, tab bar, um, example project and you can type in your team name and you can choose an organization identifier and then we're going to choose storyboard from the um, interface type and underneath language we're going to choose swift okay and then i don't need um, core data or unit tests but if you're going to use those you can check those two boxes so we'll click the next button and I'm going to make sure that I check this box here, create Git repository on Mac, because I'll want to manage this project with GitHub. And if you don't need GitHub, you can uncheck that. Next, I'll click create and make sure I'm in a folder where I want to save my work. And here we are. So now we're in Xcode and we can see the files over here on the left side. So I've got my app delegate, my scene delegate, those are default kind of boilerplate files. And then I have my view controller, right? So the view controller is controlled to the one default view that we get. So this default view here is connected to the view controller. And if I can see it here, if I go to the, um, the little newspaper icon here, which is the identity inspector, if I click on this, you can see it says class view controller, and that shows me view controller over here. And if I click on the little arrow, it should take me to that view controller, right? So uh, we're not gonna worry about the view controller right now, but that's just how it's all connected by default, okay? So what we wanna do now is I wanna create a tab bar controller. And in order for that to work, we need to create the tab bar navigation controller and then create um, uh, view controllers that can act as views for each of the tab buttons. Okay, so to do that, we need to, we're going to use this default view here as one of the starting views, but we need to wrap this view in the tab bar navigation controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it, and you can click this view controller button at the top here, and then I'm going to go to the editor menu. So I go to editor menu and I'll choose embed in tab bar controller, right? So I'll choose tab bar controller from the embed in menu. And what's going to happen here is storyboard's going to show me, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. It's going to 
create this new tab bar controller, and then it's going to make this the default or initial view controller. So it puts the arrow here. And then this arrow right here is a relationship segue. So essentially it's connecting this original view controller to the new tab bar controller through this arrow. Okay. And you can drag these around and position them anywhere you want. I'll drag this guy over here. I'm going to arrange this how I had it arranged originally because I kind of like that arrangement. So I'm going to put this guy over here. And then you can see that my tab has one tab bar item that's connected to this view controller, right? And the item, if I, if I click on it, you can see that it shows me the tab bar right here. And if I click on the item down here in the view, you can see it gives me an item and that's the tab bar item. So if we want to set the icon or the name of our tab, we can do it through the item. Okay. So now we've got one view. Let's add another view. Okay. So to add another tab and another view, what we'll do is we'll go to the library menu, which is the plus button up at the corner here, kind of in the upper right. And when I click on that, you know, it gives me all of the library items, right? And what I want to do is I want to scroll to the bottom and I want to find this view controller right here. And you can search for it this way too. You can say like view controller, right? And, uh, you know, it'll bring up all the different view controllers. So we just want the plain view controller. You know, if you want to use one of these other ones, that's okay too. I'm going to grab the view controller here and drag it into my storyboard. And you can see now that I have another, you know, view right there that looks like the phone, right? So this is another view, but there's no line connecting it to the um, navigation controller, right? Or the tab bar navigation controller. So what I'll do is I'll hold the control key. So I'm holding the control key on the keyboard and I'll click and drag from the tab bar controller to my view controller. Okay. So when I do this, it's going to give me a menu and the menu says, you know, manual segue or relationship segue and then non adaptive manual segue. So what I want to do is I want to choose this one right here relationship segue view controllers. And when I do that, you'll see that I get another one of these connections, right? And if let's zoom in on that, right? So these, uh, these little icons here are kind of uh, language that Xcode is using to help us out here. And this one with this little zigzag or little kind of S shaped line is the relationship segue. So it says that this view controller is part of the tab bar controller. They have a relationship, right? And you can see now I have another item right here and this guy has his own um, item at the bottom. Let me zoom out. Okay, so there's our, um, our tabs with their relationship segue. Let's add another one. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll go to the library palette. I'll type in view controller and then I'll drag another view controller into the view. And then I'll repeat the process, control key, drag from the tab bar controller to the view controller. And I'll choose relationship segue view controllers. And now I get another view controller here and I'm gonna even these out so they look nice. I feel like I'm getting more done if everything looks nice. So uh, let's do this. Maybe I'll do it like this, right? There we go. So that's looking pretty good. So uh, how can we know that this is working? Well, let's test it, right? So first of all, on the first tab here, I'm going to give this a color. So uh, I'll go to the um, properties or attributes inspector, click on the view controller here, and um, there's an option here for background color. And I used red, green, and blue. I'm actually going to choose orange this time. And I'll click on the next one. And I'll go to the attribute inspector and choose. Um, I, actually, I, got, I clicked in the wrong spot. I'm going to click in here and then choose background color. And maybe I'll choose purple this time. And then I'll click here. I, I basically need to select the view here to set the background color, right? So you can see the view needs to be selected. And then I'll choose, um, let's do teal color, right? So there's three different colors right there. 
And if I test my app by running it with the run button here, it'll open it in iPhone 14 Pro on the simulator. And there's my orange view. And here's a button that takes me to the purple view and the teal view. Right, so that's pretty good. Let's add some icons now. So we're setting this up and we're gonna, you know, we have to go through some steps here to get everything working. So we've got the navigation is working. We have three different view controllers and we could start dragging UI elements in here and setting them up with constraints and things. But maybe we also want to configure the icons. So um, I'm gonna go to the assets.xc assets in my story, in my, uh, my Xcode project. And if you don't see that, you might be on one of these other tabs here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the, um, the files tab right here, and it shows me all the files in my project. And then I'll go to this assets, SXC assets. So this is a place where we store all of the files or like uh, images and things that we import into our project that are going to be used by the project, right? And then I have some icons here that I'm going to use. So um, I have this eye icon right here, so I'll drag it out. And the icons, just so you know, they're going to be black and white. So you're, it's hard to see this one. Um, let me see if I can zoom in on it there, right? So this is a black and white icon, right? So it's just black and white. And the system will tint it, so it'll colorize it in the system and tint it whatever tint color you set. So the default tint color is blue, but you can control that, right? And I've, I've created the icon at 25 by 25 pixels. And that's the size of the default tab bar icon. And if you have a higher resolution phone, it'll use either 2x, which will be 50 by 50, or it will use 75 by 75. I actually didn't do the 75 by 75 for all of the icons here, but I did it for the eye. Actually, I did it for the filled one, but I didn't for, do it for the not filled one. But but anyway, we'll, we'll just use the, the two icons here. So so how are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to drag my icon into the XC assets over here and drop it off. And then it gives me the 1x. So it says this is the 1x version. And then I'll drag the 50 by 50 pixel icon, that's my 2x version, into the second slot here. And if I had the 75 by 75 one, I would drag it into the 3x version, okay? So I've got the eye icon. Let's do the filled icon also. So here's a 25 by 25 filled icon. So there's the first one. And then I'll drag the second one here. And then I have the third one and I'll drag it right there. So now I have 25, 50, and 75, okay? Let's do the coffee icon. So I'm gonna drag my coffee icon over here to create the first icon set. And then I'll drag the 50 by 50 icon into the time, the two X or times two slot. And then I'll continue, I'll grab my filled icon. And you'll see, I have a reason for having the filled and not filled icon. So we'll, we'll use these all, okay? So next I'm gonna grab the, um, the filled 50 by 50 icon and drag it into the two X slot. And then I'll grab the cat icon here, which is the 25 by 25 icon and the filled or the not, wait, the not filled 50 by 51. This is kind of uh, very repetitive. And then I'll drag the other icon into the sidebar here and then drag the 2X version into the slot there. Okay, so now that I have all of my icons and they're in the XC assets, these names that I have here will be the names that we can access them in from in storyboard, right? So I'll go to my storyboard here and I'm going to click on the icon right here. And if you can't click it here for some reason, you can always go to the view and click the item here in the, um, the list view, right? So or the, the hierarchy view, right? So I'll click on this guy and then it shows me tab bar icon over here in the properties inspector. So if you don't see this, you might be on one of these other tabs here. So I'm gonna click on the attribute inspector and make sure that I'm on the attribute inspector, right? So uh, here I can set a badge. So you could say like 20 things and you see I get that little circle with the number in it. Let's zoom in on it, right? So if you need to add a badge to your icon, you can do that here. I don't need the badge, so I'm gonna leave that off. And then um, we've got the system icon. So you can choose one of the built-in system icons like favorites, and it gives me the star, right? 
or you can choose a custom icon. And if I click on the menu here, it shows me all of the things in my SC assets, right? So here's all the system icons at the bottom, and here are the icons that I imported. And notice it doesn't show the 2X version because it, the system will automatically grab that when the phone is a 2X phone, okay? So I'm gonna set this one to the I right here. So now this one will display the I. And then over here, I'm going to choose, um, let's choose the coffee. And then this one right here will be the cat. So I'll choose my cat there. And now I've got the cat. And actually I made a, a small mistake here. Um, this is the selected icon. So actually what I wanna do here is I wanna make this one the eye filled icon. So when we're selected or on this tab, it'll be filled in. And then at the bottom here where it says bar item, I'm gonna go to the image and choose the not filled icon. So I don't see the not filled one here, but when I run the app, it'll show that when we're not on this tab and it'll show the selected icon when we're on that tab. So I'm gonna click on my next coffee cup right here and switch this to the filled coffee cup and then choose this one as the not filled coffee cup. And then we'll continue and do the cat. So I'll select the cat here, filled cat, and then um, not filled cat down here. Okay, so there's our there's our, our icons right there. And um, also you can see if I select on select the item here, it also gives me a title. So I can say, you know, I and then um, for the coffee cup, I can say coffee. And then for the cat, we'll make this one say cat. Okay, so we'll save all that and then we'll click the run button and test it out. So here's our app and you can see I have my icons along the bottom. And if I click on them, it shows the view. So, and you can see here when I click on this, I get the filled icon. And when I click on this one, it becomes the filled icon and this one becomes the outline icon. Now my icons here are a little hard to read and you know that's you know maybe to be expected if i had like a you know white background they would be easier to read and then maybe the transparent tab bar would be okay but we can set the background color for the tab bar if we want so let's do that here in this case since i have a colored background maybe i want to have a white tab bar at the bottom so to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up to the to the um navigation controller here right and when I click in the area at the bottom here, you can see it selects the tab bar. So here's the tab bar controller, and here's the tab bar, right? And then in the property inspector, there's a whole bunch of options here, and we can set these. So if I go down to view over here, and actually there's a tab bar also, so you can choose background, and you can choose image, you can choose shadow selection, uh, image tint, and there's a whole bunch of options. I'm gonna to go to the view here and then there's a background option here and it says clear color. So I'm on background under view and I'll choose a color. Let's choose um, system white. And now the background for the tab bar will be white, okay? It doesn't show it here, but it does show it up here. And when we test it, you'll see it. Oh, and there's our, our icons on the tab bar, okay? So uh, that maybe gets you started on your tab bar controller. Maybe I'll add another video later. Um, it, let me know if, if you think this is useful and um, we can continue this with, with a, some follow-up videos, but that would be our basic tab bar controller setup. And from here, you can start working in your view controllers and adding constraints and other UI elements and things like that. So thanks for watching and I hope that this was helpful.